So, what's going on guys? It's yours truly, um, Jared Klein. Nice to have you guys here and viewing this um, for the moment. Um, this new docu-series, um, episode one, as this is at the moment, um, this new docu-series is all about inspiration. Um, so I'm super excited, I'm really, really excited to take you guys on my journey, on my personal journey, what, what, what comes from here onto the screen. And um, as you guys don't, as you guys know, I'm a graphic designer. As you guys may not know, I'm a graphic designer. And inspiration is a big, 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 big part of my creative process. Um, looking online, looking um, at other people's work, um, and kind of gathering ideas. The reason I look at work for inspiration is to kind of gather ideas. I mainly do this when I'm in a position that. Um, that is kind of supporting the, the whole notion of creator's block. And if creator's block is a big thing for me, I look out at other people's work and really kind of dive into the whole ideation process of what they were thinking, how they came up with these ideas and put myself in their shoes um, to kind of to kind of stir my mind, stir my creative process and everything like that and kind of um, and kind of really get the whole process going and really, really, really um, start the engine start the gears of, of my whole creative process so this whole episode is going to be a very introductory episode to why I, one why i'm starting this two um what my whole notion is behind this whole series like where i'm going to go with this um and then three kind of exemplify some ideas and some ways to go with inspiration um where i currently go um and what I, what I currently use to kind of dive into things, um, to really get that, get that whole process going, get the gears moving, like I said. So moving on to the whole notion of myself, myself. So who am I? My name is Jared Klein. Um, I'm currently a senior, first semester senior. I'm at the University of Wisconsin, Stevens Point. Um, I'm currently living in Cronenwetter slash Mosinee, Wisconsin, um, during this whole quarantine COVID-19 pandemic type of situation um, hopefully it's towards the end of it all but um, we'll, we'll see how it goes but yeah I'm currently pretty much going to school all online so because of that the communication that I have with my classmates is very limited yes I can I can email I can get their phone numbers and text yes I can do this yes I can do that and I do have a select few friends um, like a select group of friends that I really trust and I really that we bounce ideas off of every every chance we get um but this whole this whole notion of working online working from home working working by myself really really ignited um an opportunity for me to really dig deep and really kind of go through with my whole creative process and figure out what really works for me to be able to to be able to i guess perform at the at the top of my game even though i'm not in the um in the whole traditional school setting, going to a classroom every day, um, really getting in that that whole, um, really being comfortable with the idea of going to class, um, dedicating dedicating certain time when I'm at class to um, doing the work. Because of that, I have to dedicate the time and schedule at the time for myself at home with other distractions. And I got to be honest, it's been it's been a big challenge. So because of this, I have really developed um, a handful of ways that that really allow me to kind of go into um, my whole creative process and, and whole inspiration aspect of things in my creative process, since inspiration is the main topic of this documentary, of this docu-series. I'm going to be going going over my whole, just kind of just kind of overarching and really summarizing the few ways I go through, um, go, go through the whole process of grabbing inspiration. So let's start, number one, is Behance. So what Behance is, it's a online um, online portfolio site, kind of curated, or not curated, ran by and ran in, in conjunction with um, Adobe and its products. That's where I house my portfolio currently. Um, making a website is one thing, yeah. It's, it's, it's easy to be personal um, on a website, but you, I can also buy a domain and have the domain direct towards my Behance so it can look like I have a website, but Behance is a lot easier to kind of to kind of make and to kind of um, regulate as time goes on. There's a lot of built-in features with Behance that has similar um, that has similar connotation to a personal website, but Behance is more centralized around 
um, around your work and people that are viewing your Behance can really dig deeper if they want to to learn more about you learn about your experience learn and even take a look at your resume if you have your experience and stuff documented on that website so like I stated Behance is really a conglomerate of, of people um, of portfolios of different different types of people with different types of situations but primarily graphic designers um, graphic designers and motion designers um, illustrators all underneath that whole big Behance niche um, so what Behance allows me to do personally is I go through um, and based on the people I follow they have a for you page simple like simplified um, type of situation where it recommends work that you have looked at previous based off work that you've looked that you've looked at previously kind of similar to the for you page on TikTok or the explore page on Instagram um, it really has um, work that is directed towards your interests and towards what you um, towards what you really like looking at um, it has an algorithm built in that probably you know suggests that for you but that's mainly where I am able to go to look for work um, for inspiration they do have a built-in mood board um, type of situation, kind of similar to Pinterest, um, which I'm gonna go over later, um, similar to Pinterest. So you can kind of put projects into there from other people into your mood boards where you can go click on and that's where you can view all these projects and that's where you can kind of set aside your whole inspiration type of situation. That in itself is a big destination where I go to gather my inspiration and it's, and it's probably 90, 85 to 90% of the time I spend on Behance is looking at inspiration and looking at other people's work really to to kind of see one, to see how, to see what my friends and what, what my acquaintances are designing, um, appreciating their projects and also seeing potential opportunities where maybe I could go different ways um, in my design process as well as as well as picking those things out for for um, future inspiration sources. So using this SMS sports hashtag really organizes things in a way for me to kind of scroll through, scroll through the media, scroll through what types of things people using the SMS sports hashtag are posting. Basically what SMS sports is, it's kind of a creative group for sports designers. And because I'm, because I'm going into sports design or want to go into sports design or have an avid um, interest in sports design, using the hashtag SMS sports really organizes the work that I want to be seeing, the, the people I want to connect with. So Twitter in, in all in all, um, just kind of to, to summarize things um, based on personal experience, Twitter is mainly a, a kind of, I use it as like a messaging platform. Um, that's where I get most of my freelance work. That's where I connect with the most people. Um, I don't really use it that often for looking at inspiration. It's probably about, probably about if I, if Behance is 85% of inspiration, um, I use Twitter for about 10% of that inspiration. Ba just basically based off of me following friends that are currently in the sports world. Um, and also like just, just through my feed, seeing what they post, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So all in all, Twitter is also a very good source, but I just don't use it that much in comparison to Behance for inspiration purposes, but it is a very good source. And I do, I do go there every so often solely for inspiration. And lastly, 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 but certainly not least, even though this is about 5% of my inspiration process, um, kind of, kind of utilization, um, it is. Pinterest. Um, I don't really go on here often, but when I do, um, it's not solely looking for um, specific like directed um, graphic design content. Um, I don't curate my search results or curate what I'm looking for towards sports design. I use Pinterest mainly to kind of go over um, what art, like different art, different illustration, um, that like different side of things, not so not so rigid like what sports design is, but more free flowing, more, um, I guess, cliche art examples to kind of give a different feeling towards my designs. Pinterest for myself, I don't really use it that often. Like I said, it's about 5% of what I use um, for inspiration, but all in all, Pinterest is a really good spot to go um, if, if you're looking for different types of art to base your art off of. Um, I know a big thing in the sports industry is that People follow trends, follow trends immensely. You go to a handful of different teams, a handful of different organizations, and you can see the same trends, um, same trends being present in their social media design and in their marketing design. So that that is something that makes the sport, sport industry very stale at times. 
So looking on, looking on Pinterest for myself is a big refresher in a sense, looking at different types of art, looking at different types of creative ways to display information is a big, big, big way. Um, it's a big, big, big way to kind of swerve my whole creative process and swerve my whole um, essence of thinking about how to design certain things. So as a whole, to kind of summarize the things um, that I've kind of gone, gone over, um, excuse me, in this whole episode, um, looking at different websites for inspiration is a big thing for me personally. Like I stated, Behance, Twitter, Pinterest, those are three, three main things that I look at for inspiration that really, that I really gravitate towards and really trust, um, as a source of anti-creative block, I guess I can say, to kind of aid in my creative process. A big thing for me as well, um, as I will be going over in next episode, uh, so kind of sneak peek, wink, wink, um, is mentors. Thank you for coming out today and listening to me kind of jabber on about this whole, this whole aspect of inspiration as a whole. Um, it's a big thing for me personally um, in my creative process, and I'm really excited to showcase um, everything that I kind of go into um, as a designer and as um, an inspiration addict, I guess I can say and label myself as. Um, and I also go, go really deep into creative block every so often. So this is a big thing for me to kind of exemplify my whole experience with you guys and really hope to connect you guys and make you guys go out, reach out, um, and really kind of take that, that next step, that next initiative for yourself and for your personal life and for your personal career. If you are in design or even if you aren't in design, you can kind of connect this into a different career and into a different segue as well. So again, I really appreciate you guys coming out. And, um, like I said in the beginning, this has been yours truly, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Stay tuned.